Chat, think about it. We had the perfect team. Everyone in their perfect roles, the best players in their roles, in the peak of their careers. We literally had the perfect team. And we had the perfect, almost perfect ending to the year. Optic is a team that is carved into Valorant history, but looking at their players now, after failed super teams, devastating upset losses, and even retirement, you might wonder how they ever built that legacy. This is the story of the greatest team of Valorant's pre-partnership era, and it begins at the very inception of the VCT. It's 2021, Sentinels have just won Valorant's first ever international LAN, and Optic's Valorant team doesn't actually exist yet. The team that would become Optic was instead playing under Envy, and they weren't doing too badly. Consistent top 4 finishes domestically cemented them as a leading NA team, but it wasn't quite enough to put them on the international stage. They needed a boost in firepower going into the Challengers playoffs, and luckily a cracked duelist had just become available. And Box had missed out on qualifying to the tournament, which left Ye without a team going forward. He was the perfect fit for Envy, who dropped Mame to pick him up. The roster was now Crashies, Victor, Marv, FNS, and Ye, a team who, at the time, were decently strong, but not quite at the level of the two North American Titans, 100 Thieves and Sentinels. Envy beat TSM in phase and lost the Sentinels before facing Exet. With three international spots on offer, this would be the match that qualified Envy to Masters Berlin, where they could prove themselves against the best teams in the world. But being in the lower bracket, this match was do or die. The crashies. Alt is gonna come out, Aaron goes in aggressive, but Ye! Ye just goes, he full sends, Crashies is able to get one as well, as Ye gets a third! It seems like it's gonna require a Herculean effort just to equalize things, Ye gets one, Ye gets a second, what more fitting of a way to do it? Welcome in Berlin, baby! Envy's representing North America at Masters! The best teams in the world had gathered in Germany to dictate the state of global Valorant. There were so many questions. Would Sentinels just dominate again? Could 100 Thieves challenge them for that NA crown? Was Europe going to retake the crown of FPS through G2? Or could Asia make their first real mark on the scene with the Korean powerhouse of Vision Strikers? Not many of those questions, though, were about Envy. As the NA third seed, there wasn't really much to say. Clearly, they had potential, but in their first international event, they surely wouldn't do very much. The group draw did treat them nicely, though. Every team in their group were from regions quite far behind North America in 2021. Devo Kid from Brazil, Crew from Latin America, and Zeta from Japan. Envy were up against the Brazilian squad first, a team known for their mechanical prowess with star player Heat leading the charge. But luckily, Envy had their very own star duelist, and he was not going to be beaten. Through Kitchen though, Victor with the showstopper, it's actually Ye who's able to get one, Ye gets the second one as well, Envy once again take the lead in overtime. I mean, they've got him boxed in, there's nowhere they can go. He can't do there anything is. without them knowing Ye's able to secure it. And so they moved on to face Crew in the group decider. Crew were a solid team, but this one wasn't even close. Ye once again took over the server, establishing himself as a top duelist at the event, but there was still doubt over the validity of these wins from Envy. How good were Crew and Vivo Keed really? We needed to see them against a top team, and luckily, now that they'd qualified into the playoffs, that's exactly what we would see. Sentinels had only lost one match in four months before Masters Berlin, picking up a trophy on the way. Tens was pretty universally the best player in the world, and it was a true North American super team from every angle. Could the challengers really usurp North America's throne? It started in the best possible way for Envy, going up 9-3 at the half and then winning the pistol to bring it to 11. There was no easy way back for Sen. Well, unless you have tens. We'll have to deal with the players on the other side. Crash is going to be the first man forward. Finds one. Does he expect two more? Yeah, he does. That's another foul. A third, no. Six still finds damage. And it's tens against three. There's one. The second. No way. They're going to set the defuse right now. He can't find it. He's tapping it away. Oh my god. Unless something like Ye gets involved. He needed that to be cleaner. Couldn't quite find it. And tens just pushes himself oh into them. Oh my word. Three found. Give him the four. Crashies will fall for him. Give him the ace. Envy had come so close, but they seemed doomed to never beat Sentinels. The individual prowess of tens was just too much to handle. But Envy didn't lack individual prowess. And sometimes you have to fight fire with Nothing fire. confirmed on the back of it. And look at this. Sentinels will fall through. Marv will find one on the way in, though. He spotted three at least crossing. Maybe two. Marv finding some excellence here. A needed amount of kills coming in for him, but ten still stands. So there's still a bit of hope in this. Marv! Maybe not. Marv! This is his round! Then Dapper able to trade it out, but it means nothing. Ice in the veins. And now look at the HP. Zoms is low. Dapper is low. And they can't get on the spike just yet. They've got to sit this one. Zoms. Oh, the spike! No way, Crashies! Crashies! 10 HP. And now the push up comes in. Tens checks it. Still dies. Crashies single handedly this round. Might be doing it for him, and he has. 
Envy refusing to take the knee to the king so far. And with that momentum, Envy cleaned up map two in smooth fashion, with Ye once again putting up a huge performance. Envy had done the impossible, eliminated Sentinels from an international tournament. Not only that, they had eliminated Sentinels as the first team to go home from North America, because the other NA team, 100 Thieves, were set to be their next opponents. 100 Thieves were coming off a massive comeback win against Ascend, a match that still has its place in Valorant Legend. That qualified them into this semi-final against Envy, another NA derby. With Sentinels out, the winners of this match would be crowned America's new kings, and also secure themselves a spot in the grand finals. It was the single most important match of Valorant these players had played yet. But even so, one of Envy's most formidable players seemed to feel no pressure at all. Yeah, he's in a clutch spot here. He does have... One bullet left with the option. Has that blade from online. If he's able to get that, all right, he's good for one. It's going to be on to steal. He has to creep his way forward. A Red Bull clutch from Ye. Ye destroyed 100 Thieves, especially on Haven. With a 31 and 9 KD, he was unstoppable. He was quickly becoming a contender for the best player in the world, with constant world-class performances against every single opponent Envy matched up against, and he'd brought them to a grand final on their international debut. But as they watched the other semi-final unfold, they realised their next game would, without a doubt, be their hardest match yet. Gambit were the Russian Bastions tearing their way through the bracket in Berlin. All you need to do to understand just how good they were is to watch their 13-0 vs G2 in the semi-finals. Yes, a 13-0 in the semi-finals. Their players were very individually skilled, but their true strength came from strategy and synergy. Every player on the team had a role, and they each played it perfectly. Nats was arguably Gambit's star player, rejuvenating Lurking as a valid playstyle, and with Chronicle, Shados, Defo, and Redgar as the supporting cast, they were coming into the final as favourites. Envy definitely still had a chance, but it would have to be a life game from the whole squad to overcome this behemoth of a team. The stage is set for this grand finals best of five. One of these teams will be leaving the stage as champions, bringing home a trophy and earning the ultimate bragging rights for their region kakuka it does not get better than this they going with this they need something to open up for them here and nothing is they have 25 seconds and they got to now lean back towards b but redgar's still here he still knows what's going on there's still nat to the back of the side envy come on you've got to make this happen chronicle he walks through and destroys envy three back to back frags and it might be four in a second he's on the chopping block gambit have made it to 12. one more round and gambit walk away match point Chronicle, the man who just destroyed them in the prior round, is just around this corner for the time. Timing, oh my god, what? no! Yeah, he's made a meal of it! It's all going to pieces! No way! That was the end of Envy's run in Berlin, but their second place finish had secured them a spot at Champions in December, another chance to be crowned as the best Valorant team in the world. But they wouldn't even get close. An easy win over X10 and a close loss to Europe's up and comers Ascend left Envy with an elimination match to qualify for the top eight. It was a rematch against X10, the team from Thailand which Envy had just 2 0'd. No one expected them to lose here. Envy took map 1 and went 5 0 up on split. The script was going to plan, until X10 decided to turn up, and they brought it back to win 13 8. An upset was on the cards, but after Envy up went 9 3 at the half on Haven, it was pretty much over. Good. Crashies is online, they have the great weapons. It's a great oh my god, it's a great bogging. What a play by Marv. Oh, but I'm sure you're familiar with the 9 3 curse, and this match was no different. Gorgeous C split. Wait, what? Paddy? Oh, no, He's no, so no, no. Where's Ye? Where is your? Oh, oh, no Envy were sent home by this wild Thai team in a match that would be heralded as one of the most unlikely upsets in Valorant history. They'd have to wait until 2022 to compete again, and with a new year came new branding. Envy had merged with Optic, so this team would now be playing under the storied green wall. That wasn't the only change that came for this team in 2022 though. The biggest thing was a change to the game itself. Chamber was released just before Champions 2021, but not playable in VCT until the start of the new season. The community wasn't sure on how good he'd actually be, relying heavily on gunplay to hold down sights as opposed to tripwires or mollies like other sentinel agents. But pretty quickly it became clear just how valuable his teleport was, as it allowed him to escape any dangerous situation with the click of a button. And that suited a player like Ye perfectly. 
he was able to use the op aggressively without the fear of getting punished, and also control the map with two trademarks. It's easy to forget just how busted this guy was when he was released. He was so good, and Ye was so good with him, that by week 3 of the new VCT season, Optic had already put Ye on chamber on 6 out of 7 maps, and it was working. Oh, oh no! no. Absolute catastrophe as Ye finds perfect timing with the quarter oh, force and annihilates the entire team, secures the ace. Ending the group stage with a 3 and 2 record qualified them to the playoffs, where they clinched wins over Exet and a previously undefeated Cloud9 squad. Ye continued to drop monster performances on Chamber to bring them to the upper final, and with two spots reserved for NA at Masters Reykjavik, winning this match would mean making it back to the global stage. But in the story of their opponents, Optic were considered the villains. The Guard had a young, talented squad who had scrapped their way into Tier 1 through the Open Qualifiers, 30 no 100 Thieves, and then continued that momentum to become a top 3 team in North America out of nowhere. Trent seemed like God's gift to Valorant, pulling out legendary players on every map, and Sire player's Korean Jet was unstoppable. Everyone loved them, and there was no telling just how far this rookie team could go. But all heroes need a setback. Potentially even just pulls plant utility. And we see that Molly coming out from the showers, but it gives the tell away. That Valid is there, and Ye is just unstoppable with the operator. The spike is defused halfway, oh, no and way. Ye gets the quad kill for the round for Optic. Optic were the ones who gave it to them in this upper final, qualifying themselves to Reykjavik in the process. Even though they played spoiler to the guard's miracle run, many were excited to see if Optic could recover to their Masters Berlin form once again, and if Ye could keep up his dominance on his new one trick. Welcome to the beautiful Reykjavik, the site of our first Masters International event of the 2022 of Valorant a Champions Tour. Optic's first match in Iceland was against the very same team that knocked them out of Champions. X10 had rebranded to Zersha, but with four of the same players, it was effectively an exact rematch. It was the perfect chance for Optic to start their international year off with a solid win and to get some sweet revenge in the process. Do the smoke. Able to do much. The shock dart swings through his finesse. Oh, Pop, but Fox oh, gets oh, three! Oh, finesse oh, left alone! And it happens! The upset happens again. Never mind. That loss put Optic on the brink of elimination. But Optic were no strangers to pressure like this. And over the course of the tournament, that would become very clear. They easily dealt with Crew to face Zersha once again in the decider for playoffs. This time though, Optic stayed in control of the series, debuting a neon comp on Fracture that outpaced the team from Thailand. Top 8 secured, now with some momentum behind them. That's that green wall. That's what that is. And that rematch against the guard? It had already arrived. The two teams were very familiar with each other at this point, but being on land for the first time would surely affect the rookies. Optic had the upper hand in the experience department, and they showed it. It's good, obviously, it's an eco being taken by the guard. Yay! Hajimatta ka! What a headshot. Yay! Yay! Yay dominated map 1, and with their own map pick of Haven up next, it seemed to be optics for the taking, but the guard's own veteran stepped up, with Sire player dropping a godly performance to even the score. Fracture would decide it. It might just get sandwiched here at Dish, has to use and the fast lane to underneath. escape, and there's a fight underneath! Doubled up, Victor needs to try and survive, FNS trying to collapse onto it, the swing time makes it, it is a disaster right now! It's being swarmed, I think the plan Three might be Rolling left. Thunder for Rolling Thunder, yeah. Null Command there, swinging round! Sire player, just the operator! 8-4 at the half. If the guard are really trying to play a reactive style, use early round information to Whoa. dictate it. Guy and a former Sire player, knives in hand, I believe 19 kills to his name, pushes forward, there's a stun, and he's just broken his ankles. What an outplay! Worked in the neutral. And now moving forwards, Net tries to swing at the rest of his team, now it's just going straight through, all but a strike, splits up the side. In this moment, the rest of this match, and of this story, was already written. 10-5, a 2v4. Optic are set to lose this round, which would make it six in a row for the guard. From there, they'd probably close out the game pretty easily, and move on to face DRX, who won the series earlier in the day. Optic would fall into the lower bracket, up against a wild Paper X team, where anything could have happened. The miracle run from the rookies would continue, triumphing once again over their North American counterparts. If the guard were playing any team other than Optic, this is probably how it would have gone. But that was the thing about this team, about these five players. Some way, somehow, they would always find a way to rewrite the script. And in this moment, it all came down to one player. Look at the timing as they push through. That's quite fantastic. Marv staying alive. 75 Enemy HP. Four kills. Potentially dead. the ace to try and close it. That is 
immense. That ace from Marv was the catalyst for Optic's comeback. One round lost out of the next eight secured victory in the series, dooming the guard to an early exit. One, two, three, all day! Optic's next match was against the Korean powerhouse of DRX. Mako was undoubtedly leading the competition to be the best controller in the world, capitalizing off of the team's ever robust structure. He showed exactly why on Ascent, and put the Korean squad ahead in the series. It would be difficult to disrupt DRX's momentum on Icebox, a map they'd already won 13-2 and 13-4 in this tournament. Optic would have to if they wanted to stay in the upper bracket though, and once again, they barely found a way to fight back. Enough of what he needs, and now FNS, where are you in this? You're dead! They are just swinging him down! Crashy's desperate to try and do it! But now time! Has he bought enough time? On the defuse! Just gonna hold this down as best they can and pray! No and breath. Their breath. Point zero four, Lauren. But it was just enough to bring Icebox over the line and the series to split. And there's a reason this map is known for its historic matches, because this game was one of them. Wait, surely, wait, I'll be seeing it yet. He definitely Any saw kill. Victor waiting. Nice work from RB leading the charge here. And this is a shutdown, DRX. Welcome back to the game. Right, but Ye's managed to slip in as well. Slip the net. He's going to isolate one. Ye doing so nicely Beautiful. here. Beautiful work from Optic to handle oh, that. Regardless, he still did well. Do they know that there's still another player up there? I thought FNS could have done more, but no, it's down to someone like Marv, who finds the timing just right and says, Give it a oh, big involved! How did he get away with it? He can. Zest is on the other side of this and Buzz still on the back side. Quick check, but he gets quickly dealt with. And now Optic shouldn't be able to spiral off the back. There's no big denial. Zest! Big work from Zest. As Ye gets walled off and denied any entry. He needs three here, and he's gonna get none. 12. 12, we're going the distance. He's trying to bail out towards heaven, but he's going to try to regardless. Yeah, he stands and fights. He knows there was pressure behind him, breathing down the back of his neck. It was going to be Stax. There it is. Stax gets removed. Great work from Ye. There's no flashes. They can't pop this. They have to swing it. Ye actually going to be rewarded for his patience. And it's all on Buzz, oh. and he can't do it all. Most knows this problem. Now he does. He's got players surrounding him all the front. He's going to have to make this something. They into the oh, spot. they actually flash it. Are you kidding me? Crashies. So good, but Stack still stands. He has to become the turret. He can't do it. Now the two players who are so far away have 13 seconds to get over here and try and deny. The plot has to go down. Can they deny it? No way! That's a, that's a spike! That was a spike lost. And now time is of the element. But still, they get it down for now. This should be okay. And look who's creeping closer. It's Buzz in a 1v2 with it all to do. Pops the ult. Wait. Everything. Nice. Yeah. It's Yay to do it, and it's Optic, the monsters of disaster. But there was still one team who could say otherwise, the only one that had gone undefeated so far in Iceland, the new Brazilian super team, Loud. An experienced core of Sadak and Sassi mixed with cracked rookies Aspas, Les and Pancada made for a formidable squad, and they were serious contenders to take the trophy. Whoever won this match would secure a spot in the grand finals, along with the crucial double map ban. Both teams knew just how important this match was, and they were desperate not to let it slip. No control of Dish, nothing in main. I mean, the attempt from Sassy to take some control gets slapped and shut down. Wow. Optic have dominated on map number one. Maybe this loud team just weren't as good as we thought, and Optic would breeze their way to a victory. I'm left yellow. Yeah, I'm holding yellow swing, like on the left. That's okay, I'm holding, I'm holding. Yeah, plant, yellow plant, yellow plant, plant. Plant. He's uh, out in the TP, wild. Is he fighting or no? Oh, no, no, he's TP'd out, TP'd well, out. Because that removes the screen. Up top. I can't plant, I can't plant. Wait a bit. Wait a bit. Take sight, take sight, guys, take sight. They, they don't have the utility to cover as they push forward. All these angles are going for Snow, snow, snow. The kills are going their way. It's like it. They've made history. Not quite. Loud bounce back on ascent and a less masterclass on Icebox laid the path for them into the Grand Final. That was a brutal loss for Optic, and to get the rematch against them in the Grand Final, they'd have to play the villains once again, this time against Japan's newest heroes. No mention of Miracle Runs in Valorant is complete without mentioning Zeta Division at this tournament. From getting stomped by DRX in their first match, to triumphing over them in the lower bracket and guaranteeing a podium finish for Japan, their improvement during Masters Reykjavik was exponential. But was it enough to take them any further and into the Grand Final? It was time to find out. He's found the perfect timing for 10 to back off, but he comes around just in time to clean up Optic, go. and they really are cleaning up Optic. This is five and zero. Heading Sugar into Zero is such a smart player. I was saying it at the beginning of the match, but I think he's one of the most impactful players we have here. <laughs> Nevertheless, 
Zeta Division Japan, they've got a commanding lead over this map one. Optic went down 5-11 on the first map of Haven in the blink of an eye. If two more rounds went the way of Zeta, they would be a map down in this lower final. It seemed like an impossible comeback. But when something seemed impossible for Optic, one man always stepped up. The Iceman. Breaks the ankles of the breach. Team's backing him up with a utility, but Lazda swinging all the way through. Zeta Division... They're just already taking this. Sugar Zero's just diving in. No help for the rest of his team, and... Just decided to just... That's the whole close now. Did we see Ye and Marv really come up huge here? Tour de Force in hand. I mean, Ye, he's done it before. Oh, the trademark as well, that slow field. Brutal to try and push through now to stun. Only the one connection, a quick flick though. Marv is already finding the value for them alongside it. Still left alone. Crow wants to try and get it. The spam through so low, but time it's running out. He has to stick it. The circle shrinking. Marv swings it at the perfect time once more. He's 26 and 11, but it's not even the kills necessarily that I'm most impressed with. The way that he's reading the rotations and finding safe plants in man disadvantage situations is just phenomenal. This guy is reading the game so perfectly right now. It's ice cold. In this own smoke, the fault line as well is going to be slowing them down. Crow's holding it and they're going to anticipate it. The setup. Crow still no match for him. Yay. Taking names, taking heads away. An optic. Marv played out of his mind in this map breaking the land kill record with 35 frags to drag Optic over the line. His read on the game was unlike anything we'd seen before, and it continued into the next two maps, where Optic won both in convincing fashion. If Optic had lost Haven, the story could have been very different, but they were writing their own story. Optic would prove that they were the best team in the world. They would prove that they could finally win a trophy. Only one team stood in their way. The only team who Optic were yet to get revenge on in Reykjavik, and the only team who was still undefeated. Loud. It would not be an easy game, especially coupled with Loud's advantage of getting two map bans. Optic's dominant fracture would not be played, and instead Ascent was up first. So in their championship whites, Optic took to the stage, ready for their rematch. And we know how good Optic are at rematches. But we are live, there's no waiting around. Welcome to the grand finals, it's Optic on the defending side, and of course that means Loud will be on the attack. Oh, should come through now. Crash he should be able to find himself an upgrade though. If he doesn't find Five anything players. from heaven, he's to the timing's perfect! The timing's perfect from Infinite! Alive. It's Crash, he's a marved on the other side. HP's a little low, but they have the numbers. One goes in. Oh, the snap from Crashies! I need Loud to wake up. But wake up, Loud did. Winning seven out of eight rounds on defense to bring the score dangerously close. Said it's nine for Loud. And they are back in this game, round by round. They are finding ways through. And with Optic on an eco, the comeback was seriously on. You can see just at the back of the side, Les is still solid enough. The spray comes in. Sassy wants to help out desperately, but there's a problem. Marv, he's behind him. No, oh, he's going to just unleash. Yeah, find Sassy, swings in, finds no. another. Marv digs deep when they need it, but it's still a 2v2, and we've seen these have problems. Marv's going to be expecting him. You've got to look towards CT as well. Keep that golden back of your mind. Who gets this shot? It. It's Marv. What a moment for this man. And Sadak now tries to find his way back in, and Crashies comes around on it. Optic make it to 12, and it's off the back of Marv in this round. That insane round from Marv stemmed Optic's bleeding, and they took the map 13-9. On to Bind, a stronghold for Optic in this tournament, but still a great map for Loud. They have to clear these close angles, they're trying to bring these SMGs to the best place, the timing's good. They fight together, and now just one Aspas who got this started made it a problem, still being a problem. Show stoppers up, baby, let's go! He can still the trade! No way! Fury gonna go out, send it through. Try and clear FNS. Maybe a tag would be great. Now for it. Yay though! Whoa! Yay! Big players make big plays in big games, and he just did. Sassy over here. Look at this. Sadax coming over. They still have yet to clear him. Victor gonna go full. He's going for us! He finds Sadax, but Sassy is still alive. Victor finds Sassy. Bakana's here. Aspas is still here. He's been deleted by Victor. And now a 2v2. And Victor just need to hold. Pancada starts to close in. The barrel shows. And now one more player less. What can you do? What can you find? Victor so low on HP, but he's still alive. He's still breathing, but he's going to lose his teammate. Marv goes down and now the defuse. He's just going to try and sit this, but time has gone away. And Victor, it's one HP is all he needed. We're tied up. It's 12-12. It's OT. Aspas dropped 29 kills on bind. Ye dropped 30. Two titans of the game going back and forth on their signature agents. But one player and one team 
had to come out on top. As well. It's an awkward position to get it going, though. Oh, Sassy on the swing! It's so good! And no. now, the one v one He's got the showstopper! Stop Sassy. He's got the showstopper online! Sassy has got barely any HP, really! Takes some chunks of damage! Victor needs to play so composed here. Keep the pressure up! Oh, he fights Sassy! It's 14 to 12! Optic have done it in OT! Optic were up 2-0 in a grand final, one map away from doing what they couldn't in Berlin, from getting revenge against Loud in the sweetest way possible, from being the best team in the world. Breeze was the final hurdle between Optic and the trophy. It was their permaban, but sometimes it doesn't matter what map a team is playing, or who's on the other side, it's just their time to win. She's yay Marv, anything up the sleeve, any more tricks to pull out? Jay starts to address the site. First no. fight found for Crashies. Quick turn, didn't note anyone towards double doors. Yeah, Yay! No way, Marv as well! And El Pancada! Torn of the life in your hands. Optic on the verge, and it's all but over. It's all but done! Optic Gaming builds a legacy freak by freak! Give it up for Optic Gaming! Optic came into Split 2 as the best team in the world. That did put a target on their back, but with Ye's chamber still dominating, they cruised into the upper finals against X-Set, the match to qualify them to Masters Copenhagen. And much like Split 1, they won that match with relative ease, and then lost the grand final. They'd have to fight through another international group stage, but this time, it was dangerous. Mostly because of Loud, who was somehow placed in the same group as Optic. In the lead-up to the tournament, their rivalry was focused on, as we awaited an almost unavoidable rematch between the two teams. But before that, Optic's first match in Denmark would be against a guild team with some heavy hitters. Leo, Safe and Trex made their debut on the international stage, and were looking for something to prove. A team that would undoubtedly punish a slow start from Optic, but as long as they could avoid that... Now FNS is in a 1v4. Certainly doesn't seem winnable. And called him into backstabbing again. How many kills does this guy have? <laughs> Never mind. I'm sure they wanted to get a better start on map two, but that's exactly what they didn't get. This time though, Optic were determined to bring it back. Optic are now down to the 2v3. Surely this round can't get that dangerous. With safe on the lurk as well. No way. Crashes collect. No it. way. What is that? Yeah, the hand and Ross, of course, is there. Steady is the hand, but FNS wants to cancel it out. You've got to be joking. What is that spray control? Can't see a thing onto the side, but he's got to try and make sure he deals with these players, Marv. Whips out the free gun, but now the line of side angles, it's there for them. A fast retake, crashes, he flashes straight through. They just can barely get their bearings, but now down to the 1v1 kills. Moments away, Leo, ultimate on line. Rips it across, and what a finish! Leo finalizes it, four kills for him, and that is them. Besting the Reykjavik champions. Leo played out of his mind with 29 kills, and an uncharacteristic underperformance from Ye meant that Optic had lost another opening match 0-2. They were in the lower bracket again, and this time, it was not an easy route back. Because somehow, the other upset in Group B had also come true. Crew took down Loud, meaning this group stage elimination match was a rematch of the previous Masters Finals. Another chapter in the rivalry was going to be written, and neither team wanted to go home. Loud's unbeatable ascent was up first, with Aspas going insane on Jet to take it 13-8. It was much the same story on Fracture, only going the other way. Split would decide it, where the rounds went back and forth. It's all down to Van Corner, but they don't know where oh my God! he is! He still gets away with it! Over time. He does damage if he buys time. Could have been a problem, but forced to back away. Static goes stopped to the doorway, oh no. and it's a t Wait, what? Oh, it's all gone. Absolutely awry. Ye now gets to roam free. Punishes Sassy. This is not how it's meant to be. And Optic holding on to this. Aspas last one alive. Mouse down to the old gods once again. Denouncing the new era. And Optic stay alive. Loud didn't really play like themselves, but you could argue Optic didn't either. A dominant win over Crew to make it into playoffs did restore some faith in the team though, and they'd have to hold on to that momentum going into the top eight.
but their path through the playoffs was almost identical to that of Masters Reykjavik. Their first match was a rematch against Exet, the North American team who beat them in the domestic grand finals, and once again Optic's experience shined through, letting them take the win and move on in the upper bracket. They then faced DRX in the upper semi-finals, again with a close final map that Optic barely edged over the line. That secured them another top 3 finish at a Masters event. Back in the upper final, one win away from a shot at a second consecutive trophy. This was also the first international Valorant match ever in front of a crowd. The pressure couldn't have been higher. And as for their opponents, well, they were a unique team. Paper X had trademarked a hyper-aggressive style, with agent compositions that seemed like they were straight out of ranked, and individual mechanics unlike any other squad. It made them very tough to play against, especially for a team so heavily reliant on anti-stratting like Optic. The clash of styles would make for an excellent match, and fans watched on eagerly to see who would come out on top. Forsaken has already worked his way around. And once again, yeah, it was actually Ye who was still on the side, but Forsaken cleans him up. Forsaken gets three. Oh, what a beautiful sound. <laughs> no, Forsaken gets the ace. Our first ever global crowd ace. From the first round, Paper X had control over this series. Forsaken and Jing showed exactly why PRX deserved to be at the top of World Valorant. Despite a bounce back on Bind, Fracture was another dominant win for Paper X. Optic simply could not match the pace and momentum of their opponents. Once again, they'd lost the upper final and would need to win a best of five in the lowest to make it into grands. And just like in Iceland, it was another team on a miracle run. FPX, the kings of Europe. They'd missed out on Reykjavik because of visa issues and barely been able to play in Copenhagen. But once Segetsu arrived in Denmark, they went undefeated through the lower bracket with some of the best individual and team form we'd seen throughout the entire tournament. Couple that with Optic's inability to get a win versus a European team, and this game would be a whole different level to the lower final in Iceland. And on that day, they just couldn't reach it. Close the gap, finds one. Life in them yet an even situation here. Zipan going back around. It's over, over. Shall the one to do it, and FPX will make it to the grand finals. FPX moved into the grand final to play a legendary series against Paper X and Optic were eliminated from Masters Copenhagen. It's not like it was the end of the world for them though. At the end of the day, they'd still reached third place and only lost to the top two teams. But if anything is clear about this Optic team, it's that they're never truly satisfied. They wanted more, and luckily, the biggest tournament of the year had just arrived. Champions Istanbul, Valorant's World Championship, where the winner would be cemented in VCT history. If there was another tournament for Optic to win, this was it. With their group again featuring Loud, Optic couldn't afford to have a slow start. It should have been easy enough against Boom, Apex LCQ team, with Optic coming in as the heavy favourites. But that was before one of Boom's players broke the LAN kill record in the first map. Tebatol dropped 38 frags to drag Boom over the line and win 18-16 on Breeze. It was a complete shock to witness, but the shock didn't last too long. Optic dominated the next two maps to win a fairly comfortable series and avoid their group stage curse. Ultimately, so did Loud, and that set up another match in the rivalry to qualify for playoffs. The last game between the two teams knocked Loud out of Copenhagen, so they were determined to even the score. An 11-1 first half on Breeze showed that they came to play, and without a near 30 bomb from Ye, Optic probably would have lost Fracture 2. They didn't though, which let them show off the new map of Pearl, a map which Marv clearly enjoyed. They took it 13-3 to make it cleanly into the playoffs, but they weren't finished. They'd have to break another curse in their next match. They'd have to win against a European team. That team was Liquid, in white hot form coming out of the LCQ. Scream's emotional leadership gave them a newfound synergy, and they'd already knocked out Paper X in the group stage. For Optic, this match was about proving the doubters wrong. If they actually could win against the European playstyle, now was the time to show it. But Breeze was never somewhere Optic were that comfortable, and Liquid took full advantage, taking the map 13-7. Ye did nearly 1v5 though. But a 5 HP clutch would be one for the ages. A 1v5 ace needed. He's going to get himself a third already. Tagged up the one for Ye. He actually has a chance in this. Just one more need and he can't quite do it. An incredibly nice try from the man himself. Bind was a great map for Optic, however, and they took it fairly comfortably. It all came down to Ascent. And just in case you'd forgotten who the best player in the world was, he decided to give us a reminder. 30 kills and 9 deaths. That is a player in championship form. This map also gave us a great moment in VCT history, courtesy of Victor. Free kill coming through on the other side, the ult through. This could actually be very dangerous. If Scream doesn't find him, he could just go back. He's going to wait for him. This is brilliant from Victor. He's waiting to get that final kill, and I think Scream has made the realization. He's going to knife him to get them their fifth round. Embarrassment for Scream and elation. 
Elysium for Victor. And Optic must have been elated to win that game and finally break the curse. Back in the upper semi-finals, this time not against DRX, but it was still another rematch. Xset had finally overcome their nerves from Denmark and were acting the villains in Turkey after beating Fnatic. They were playing incredibly well, with their very own Chamber Demon in Cryocells. This was the match to crown the kings of NA, but Optic hadn't lost it all year. Why would they now? Taking control of this one, it's a faster play though, and you can feel it now, the pressure, starting to really apply for Victor. One after the other, yay at the side, and it's going to be the 13-9, and what a way to come back. Side step, side dodge, Cryo, making the most of it, and yeah, he's a 1-1 oh! army! Tips his way across, and clean trades is what carries it through for Exit. It's down to Crashies and Marved. Can they do the heroics? Can they make the big play? Marved has had such a monstrous map All the here. space in the world! Contact through and a spray down! Crashies has found his target. A stick on the spike, there needs to be a play, but it's being watched for, and Crashies, Scott Free gets away with it, Optic are making their way through that upper bracket. Optic cemented their dominance over the region with an emphatic win on Pearl, and also secured another top 3 finish. It was a great marker of the team's consistency, but as they would say, job's not finished. On to the upper final, against a very familiar foe. Loud again. This was the fifth time these two teams had played each other this year, and Optic had gotten the better of the Brazilians in the last three matchups. But Loud had made a respectable playoff run of their own, coming into incredible form towards the end of the tournament. The teams were so familiar with each other at this point that it was bound to be a close game. Bind was the first map, and despite it being seemingly infallible for Optic, Loud took it with another monster performance from Pancada. That shook Optic and meant they had zero chance on Loud's own home ground of ascent. They lost another upper final. This time 2-0. So, am I doing something wrong? I don't get. Am I doing something wrong there? The smoke faded on me when I tried to flash through it. They're yeah, literally yeah, playing just there perfect Valorant. Yeah. And were sent into the best of five, inevitably against a team on a miracle run. But this time it wasn't a new matchup. DRX had finally shown their true potential at Champions, overcoming the fifth place curse to make it to their first top three finish. Optic had never lost to the Korean squad but it was never a decisive victory. There always seemed to be only a few rounds in it, but as long as those went the way of Optic, they'd get their rivalry rematch in the grand finals. Could DRX really take it all the way, or would Optic play the villains one final time? We've seen some huge comebacks from DRX, but they're looking outclassed right now. Moments of brilliance, but oh, what? On everybody from Optic, and one after another. Plan's gonna be at least a ninth of the time being. Peaks around the corner and Ye was watching it. From the side of the wall, Optic, every avenue, every line of sight is just locked down. There's definitely a world where you think that like, you know, there's no way that they can come back and win this. Like it's very, very hard mentally to come back and win three maps. And then, you know, we went to Fracture and... He's dropped crashes to his knees and a forward play by Marvs. He's making all the risks in the world, but not enough to take the map away. We're going to the fourth map, which was a set, which was their pick and... The 1v5. All the utility use, and as soon as the wall goes down, TRX will not be denied the map 5. 2-2 two, two now. Somehow it's 2-2. Two, two. Like, we were just up 2-0, feeling good, feeling on top of the world, and now it's 2-2, two, two, so... Last map, Haven. What could be done here with spikes being dropped down? There's no tools to try and reclaim this one, and it's a double up. In fact, even the ultimate being committed here. What? Spray down! The lockdown will not do squat. Ye yeah, could find one shot to turn it into the 1v1, and he gets the right read. Doesn't opt to pick up the rifle, wants to play fast into this one because he knows how he's low. And the warbangs, five bullets. Surely he goes with how he swings and wins the 1v1. DRX were pulling off some of the most ridiculous and unbelievable plays we had ever seen on a Valorant stage. It was hard to believe that Optic would prevent this reverse sweep. But when it seems impossible, you already know who's going to step up. Cloudburst cutting it up, but still the shots are found. It's given a right angle at the back of the site with a frenzy at play. And it had Marved ripping them apart. The Mako's still alive, and it is just down to Marvs with the Bulldog. Anything's possible in the 1v1. Jimmy, let's fucking go, bro. You are incredible. But Optic, moments away from carving their rightful spot in the Grand Finals, and there it is! Optic had somehow, some way, prevented the reverse sweep from DRX. They pulled Haven across the line, 
in one of the most exhausting series they'd ever played, but there was no time to rest, because the next day, they'd have to do it all and more over again. Everything comes down to this, the grand finals of Valorant Champions, one of Optic or Loud will be lifting the most illustrious trophy in all of Valorant here in Istanbul today. form has been formidable. Terrifying. They are now moments away from once again facing their nemesis and no higher stakes could be on the line. Let's get into things as it is the grand final. Kicking off here on map one. On the, back the, now. the single one standing and you're right, the spike is not to hand and yeah, he knows it. The oh, spike for oh, Yay! Oh. You can't dance with the devil and not expect to get burned. Yay's in the building. Crassy's the one to find the wall bank. Optic on map. Point. Four chances to try and close in. Nice and clean for Aspas. Yeah, no. Big time, so like Mars on the jump. Big block, but he's still standing. And what, what the yes. hell is what? going on? I think Optic need to make this oh my god! And it's a brutal, just an absolute spray down between Les and Sarsi. They have no idea. And Aspas makes his debut on the round. The duel of fate, of course, is going OT. 12 12. Red block back on out of the round. What is going on? One by one. They face and one by one they fall. Loud! No idea he's here. And do they turn? Do they look? Oh he's my got god! Three players! Oh my god! It's Jay! Hold on for a second. Left. And now he starts to build! He tries to get that pick towards the back of Bow House. Five more seconds. They're running low on blood time! With 7 HP! He's charging down on the side! Oh, oh my god! It's not enough! Sassy! What is Dusty made of? In between the right click and then the shot coming back in. Felt like oh an eternity for crashies. Oh my. Rotations are on the way. He's looking invested. It's a big pace change here. Zadak gets ahead of it, does get revealed by the knife though. And that's it. Tag off back harder. He's gonna be feeling so much pressure, but he found a kill, picked it down. Thank God is just standing in the open, taking the fight! Allowed! Take the round! 15 to 13! Crushing Optic in the end in OT! It's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We, there's a reset, everyone. Back to back kills, and Aspas, the last man standing. Optic, happy to sit in this crossfire, let this Optic down, and Victor to deal the killing blow. A 10 2 half from Optic. And now it's just Aspas! Tell me how Optic are three alive with rifles now, and I'll tell you. None of us saw it at the start of this round. Aspas though, good for one, oh my good God. for two, and now just the 1v1. The correct guess, Victor, none the wiser, forced to pull the trigger! Oh, yes. Aspas, the unthinkable again! Everything with this amount again from the shadows. This man is always behind him. He's got another, and now the one man in the old. That is it, Less to try and turn the tides. And he's been found, FNS has him. Optic have actually got us to finals now. Man advantage, stop throwing, guys. We've thrown on the set and we've thrown on buying. Man advantage, just please stop throwing them and we'll win this game. I promise. And he's still standing. And he's gone back for more. Oh! He's gone off. That's a spike now seen as well. So telling at this time. The rest of the team is on the way through caves. And just so well. Punishing it. Oh! Can you believe it? Aspas. That's what he's desperate for. Another attempt and another death. And no more OTs. Loud. Finally get across the line here. But this is a marathon of a game, Mike. Oops. We are one round away. The last purchase potentially for Optic. It's now or it's never. It's do or it's die. And it's a double stack towards Sua. Pancada already ripping the head off of Ye's shoulders. Would they predict the second? Oh, what? yes, they do! Pancada breaking Victor in two. And now there's only three standing. And it's all building towards this A site. They've got so much utility to work with again. Pancada and Aspas have both found one. It's all on one. The last man standing at Finesse. And after so much time, so many years of heartbreak at the hands of Optic, Loud beat them in the best possible way. Becoming the Valorant 2022 champion. What a moment. I was 
just like, man, like, it just sucks because for me, I wasn't really thinking about the loss. I was thinking like, okay, this is probably the last time this lineup plays together. It just sucked sitting there and kind of understanding like, all right, well, this is it. It is what it is. We can't change anything now. Now we just see what happens next year. Optic didn't make it into Valorant's partnership program. Much to the sadness of the community, that inevitably meant that the team that so many fans loved had to split up. FNS, Crashies and Victor stayed together on NRG, hoping to rekindle the fire that made Optic so great. Ye moved over to C9, in the supposed super team that was forming, with him as the star. Marv decided to take a break, and wait until he was ready to return to the VCT. As we now know, these decisions didn't pan out the way any of the players had hoped. NRG had a mediocre year, bombing out of champions by losing to Billy Billy Gaming twice in the group stages. Ye was dropped from C9 in a messy financial situation, and would go on to not win a match for 430 days, and Marv's late substitution couldn't save a struggling Sentinels from missing out on the domestic playoffs. But none of that really matters. What matters is that Optic are one of the teams that have defined Valorant's history, and all five players are true legends of the game. This team might not be playing together anymore, but the story of Optic lives on in the memories of Valorant fans across the world. These players aren't just remembered as kings, but as gods. Optic were the best team in the world, and that will not be forgotten. Chat, think about it. We had the perfect team. Everyone in their perfect roles, the best players in their roles, in the peak of their careers. We literally had the perfect team. And we had the perfect, almost perfect ending to the year. Dude, that was that was good vibes. That team was good vibes. You guys always ask me, like, what's my dream team? That is that is really literally it. That team. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this far into the video. It really does help the channel out and mean a lot to me that you enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed this video and if you've seen some of my stuff before and liked it, please do subscribe. It really helps me out. We're close to 50k. Love to get to 100k by the end of this year. But yeah, thank you so much. And with that, I've been Commend. Subscribe if you enjoyed. And thank you for watching.